What was that ruckus? What ruckus? I was just in my office and I heard a ruckus. Could you describe the ruckus, sir? Watch your tongue, man. Watch it. He's done it! Hip-hop may have started in the Bronx, but one can argue that Brooklyn breeds the most elite MCs to ever walk this planet. And there lies one MCs whose prolific lyricism and uncanny mic presence is criminally overlooked and highly underrated. His lyrics are at times self-deprecating, his dark satire will have you questioning your morality in the midst of uncontrollable laughter. You might know him as Ruck or Ruckus, some call him Mike Tyson because his bars hit harder than Mike in his 20s, but most just simply call him Hmm. Sean Duvel Price was born on March 17, 1972 and was raised on the east side of Brooklyn, more specifically Brownsville, an area often regarded as one of the most ruthless and violent areas of Brooklyn. Growing up, Price was always fond of New York hip-hop. In many ways, Sean Price lives up to his alias Mike Tyson. He's a barbarian with the bars, masterfully incorporating punchlines that leave a lasting impression on listeners. Ruck would mention he would see Mike all the time in Brownsville, even catching him leaning on his mother's car one time. Uh, that, that one time he was sitting on my mom's car. Oh, yeah, he was leaning on your mom's car. I told him to get up, and he took my bonton. Your bonton bon chips. Your chips? Yeah, and he sent me to the store. And you went <laughs> to the store? Of course, man. It's the champ. Right, you know. Yo, shorty, go to the store. Yeah, I went. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Right, right. One thing's certain. Sean Price's illustrious career is rooted deeply in the foundation of Brooklyn, and more specifically, Brownsville hip-hop. He would sign to the legendary Brooklyn record label Duck Down Music in the mid-1990s, and for those that don't know, Duck Down would compromise of legendary artists like Pharrell Monch, Karis One, and critically acclaimed groups like Cypress Hill and Black Moon. Black Moon would make history in 1993 with their debut album Enter the Stage, Considered an underground classic, it would set the stage for Sean Price and his Brownsville comrades to continue the tradition of putting out classic shit. Alongside his childhood friend Rock, Sean Price would form one of the most underrated rap duos in hip-hop history, Helta Skelta, and release their critically acclaimed debut album Nocturnal in the summer of 1996. The first single for the album, I'm not even going to pronounce this because I'm going to butcher the name, features a young and hungry Sean Price rapping over a boom bap head knocker. And early on in his career, you could tell that Sean P's lyrical ability was second to none as he raps. I control the masses with metaphors that's massive. Don't ask if a nigga rush a bad shit like Cassius. I'm drastic when it comes to verbs I be flipping. Cause herbs just be shitting off the words I be kicking. The debut single would also feature fellow rap duo OGC, which stands for Original Gun Clappers and consisted of members Star Rang Wonder, Louisville Slugger, and Top Dog. OGC and Helter Skelter would join forces and form the unofficial group Fab Five under Duck Down Records and would feature on each other's albums throughout the late 90s and mid 2000s. Fun fact, not a lot of people know this. Fun fact, not a lot of people know this, but Sean P was actually banned from Hot 97, the radio station, because uh, apparently at the station he smashed a phone over a security guard's head. And uh, yeah, they weren't really having that. Sean P's presence on the mic was something special even early on. His rugged and baritone vocals on Lethal Brain Blows, in contrast to the upbeat symphonic backdrop, leaves you no choice but to give the stank face. On Understand, Rock flexes his lyrical prominence by declaring he will break boys' bones like Roy Jones, but where Rock and Ruck really shine is on their third single for Nocturnal, Therapy. The two Brownsville juggernauts trade bars as Rock plays a patient in dire need of help for his violent tendencies. And of course, Rock plays a therapist and offers Ruck a six-pack and a spliff to twist while they chit-chat. Sean P gives listeners a glimpse into his clever satirical rapping style, and that mixed with a cohesive narrative, and therapy is a hidden gem. It should be criminal that it only has 95,000 views on YouTube. But, where, but Nocturnal in many ways was considered a commercial success, selling 250,000 records in an era where if you weren't on a major label, you were basically pushing CDs out the trunk. Look, in a lot of ways, Helta Skelter reminds me a lot of a rap group hailing from Southside Jamaica, Queens, New York, The Lost Boys. A lot of Sean P's early work had a funky boom bap vibe to it, whereas his later work would take on more dark and satirical themes. What's dope about P is that he goes against the conventional braggadocious aura of most MCs and is brutally honest with his brash delivery and self-deprecating lyrics that not only makes him more relatable, but it's funny as fuck too. Sean P will let you know that he's broke as fuck in one line, then in the next lets you know that he's the nicest on the mic. 
Ruckus would continue honing his skills in the late 90s with more collaboration projects alongside Rock. 1998's Magnum Force would have Helter Skelter pulling off a real Brooklyn Jack move by taking the beat to a Tribe Called Quest song Hot Sex. The song is an absolute head knocker that defines the mid 90s golden boom bap era. And in all honesty, it's just a better version compared to Tribe Called Quest. Magnum Force isn't as great of an album as Nocturnal, simply because you can peep that they were trying to reach for commercial traction with songs like Chickawoo, and the oversaturation of features on the album leave it with one too many fillers. Standout tracks include Worldwide, a haunting production that has Rock delivering a sinister hook, while Sean Price displays his lyrical mastery as he raps. Yo, Sean Price spit precise vocal local. Niggas know I'm nice, we bomb, put you in the choco. So don't go there, queer, your rhyme's boring still. Even if you did a jam featuring Lauren Hill. Although the lead single was considered a commercial success, and to this day it's actually aged well, the album lacked the cohesiveness of its predecessor and would ultimately lead to the duo going their separate ways, with a disgruntled rock leaving Duck Down Records while Sean P stayed down but would remain relatively quiet in the early 2000s. In 2002, Sean would make an appearance on Bootcamp Click's Chosen Few project, but overall would stay low during these years between 1998 and 2005. So what was Sean doing during these years? Have you always been living comfortably off of rap? Like, is this, or do you, have you had to work in between there too? Um, the period between Magnum Force and the first album, Monkey Balls? I actually did have a job. What'd you, what, did you, what was Sean Price's job? I, I want to picture that. I worked construction. Really? I was in East New York. Actually, I down the block from Prem from uh, Representatives. I was out in the street uh, doing some kind of constructing thing, destroying some building. And the guy walked by like, yo, Elta Skelter, what you doing out here? I'm like, 2759, but that's what I'm doing out here. <laughs> Finally, on May 31st, 2005, Sean P would release his debut album, Monkey Bars, Recorded between 2001 and 2005, the album sees Ninth Wonder and Crisis on the production side. And from start to finish, this is an album filled with sharp lyricism and satirical wit that fluctuates between hyperrealism and humorous metaphors. Songs like Onion Head and Madman put Sean Price's charisma on front street as he flips furious bars over hard drums and heavy bass lines. One of my favorite joints on this album is the Ninth Wonder produced Heartburn. A heavenly soul sample plays under Ruck's raspy delivery as Sean details the various things he loves to do in life. For instance, Sean raps, I love selling Knicks at night. Go home to my son, roll a spliff, and watch the Knicks at night. Even on songs that lack on the production side of things, like Jail Shit, Sean P's charismatic delivery effortlessly carries the song. In a lot of ways, Sean P has the vocal heaviness of Biggie, the lyrical wit of Jay-Z, and the dark humor of Eminem. What you're left with is a classic project that will be dopamine to your ears. Look, we are currently in a resurgence of that real rap shit. Between the colossal Griselda movement and OG goats like Brownsville, Kai, and Nas releasing music for hip-hop purists, Sean Price has been a pivotal factor even to this day. With OGs like Rock Marciano and Ka, it's hard to ignore the fact that Sean Price is one of the greatest to ever lace a track. They laid down the foundation for underground artists like The God Fahim and Your Old Droog, who have been able to take advantage of the online world in vinyl, CD, and cassette form, not only bringing back the art form of physical music, but having a direct connection to their fan base that often develops into a cult-like following. Ruck would continue making ruckus two years after his debut with his sophomore release Jesus Price Superstar. With most of the album produced by Ninth Wonder and Crisis, it is in my opinion his most refined work, with P delivering barbaric bars in contrast to the soulful backdrops, courtesy of Ninth Wonder and Crisis. One of my favorite joints on this project is Peabody. Produced by Ninth Wonder, it's a head knocker with soulful cuts and DJ scratches that's reminiscent of DJ Premier. Sean laces the track with Veminous bars followed by a dope hook by Rock that takes it back to the Helter Skelter days. Other standout tracks include The God and Stop, where P flexes his lyrical wit with lines like Never show you bozo's love, Omar from the wire, use a homo thug, and fuck I look like y'all bitch ass niggas the shook type, Missy on the chorus, the song is whack but the hook tight. Not only was Sean P funny as fuck with the bars, his ability to string narratives together seemingly while playing with multi-syllable rhyme patterns is nothing short of GOAT status. Now although I prefer Monkey Bars over Jesus Price, what makes his sophomore album up to par is the production matched the bars this time. Where it feels like on his debut, his bars brought the production to life. Look, Sean Price is as brutally honest as you could be. Female rapper list. Yeah, I like no female rappers. You don't like no female rappers? Not one. Not one. Not one. 
Just a year after his sophomore album, Sean would link up with his Helta Skelta comrade Rock for their third album, Dirt, which is an acronym for the Incredible Rap Team. It would be their last project together, and although it is not a terrible album, it's pretty clear to see who the superstar is in the duo, and oftentimes it feels like Sean P is carrying the album. Moving along, Sean P would release my second favorite album, the rough and rugged classic that is Mike Tyson. Released in 2012, the album features my favorite Sean P track of all time, The Alchemist Produced Barbarian. It uses a mesmerizing sample loop with a sudden guitar cut that has Sean P bobbing and weaving like Mike Tyson before sending bombs to his opponents. With lines like, young dummies can't spar, no life, my flow tight like your pants are, and admire the admiral animal rap, smack the shit out of a nigga then hand him his hat. It's an album that's filled with vintage ruck, as he lays down humorous bars mixed with clever metaphors that give the project high replay value. By the end of 2012, Sean Price was touring the world and amassed a devoted following. With 20 years in the game, P was no longer your favorite broke rapper. He was living and flourishing off rap and without a doubt, the number one guy holding the torch for boot camp click. Sean Price would even deny record deals from 50 Cent and Jay-Z at one point, just showing how respected he was by some of hip-hop's most regarded artists. But just as things were looking up for Sean Price, tragedy would strike as he would pass away in his sleep on August 8th, 2015 at the young age of 43. Buckshot would detail finding out about his longtime friend's death in a DJ Vlad interview, stating that he got a call early in the morning hours that Ruck had died. He immediately rushed to Sean's home where he witnessed his longtime friend deceased in his bed. And in a shocking statement, Buck would state that Sean Price's leg was shaped like a pea as he laid in his bed. Buck Wild, Steel, and Tech would follow Muslim tradition and cleanse Sean P's body, showing that Boot Camp Click was more than just a record label, it was family. What P left behind was a legacy that is embedded in the very fabric of hip-hop. His rugged style was a reflection of Brownsville. His brash personality kept you on the edge of your seat. And his bars were barbarian. Rest in peace to the Imperial P. I go by the name of Nugs. And this is that dope shit. Love.